Hello and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today we'll be talking with Multnomah County Commissioner Lori Stegman. It's great to have you on the show, Lori. Thank you, Monica. Great to see you. Thank you. You know, the, the COVID-19 crisis is, is all anyone seems to talk about lately, and, and for good reason. Um, our lives and our, our work have been pretty much turned upside down. But you're continuing yes. to work on something that is really vitally important and something that we can't lose sight of and can't afford to forget about, and that's the 2020 census. Can you tell our viewers, first of all, uh, why it's so important that every single person be counted? Absolutely. Thank you, Monica. Uh, as we all know, the census is done every 10 years. And uh, so this year, uh, when we collect that data, it's based on population. So the better that we are able to more accurately count the number of people in the state of Oregon, what that means for the state is more income into our programs that Multnomah County provides. So as one of the largest safety net providers in the region, it is absolutely critical that we get a complete and accurate count because that money goes to programs uh, like WIC, uh, Women, Infant, and Children. It goes to uh, school lunch programs. Uh, with COVID-19, uh, we know that our hospitals are under tremendous strain. It goes to funding our hospitals. It also helps plan for businesses, helps plan for transportation. Uh, there's some transportation measures that may be coming forth uh, here in Oregon. So almost every aspect of our life uh, is somehow affected by the results of the census. Uh, many nonprofits, many businesses, whenever you go out for a grant, what they do is they look at the data uh, based on the last census. So it really sets a baseline, not just for one year, but for the next 10 years. So it's incredibly important. We also know that there is a structural deficit in uh, funding many of our programs. And so this federal infusion of money that we all pay through our federal taxes is really money that should be coming back to our state to help uh, some of our most vulnerable residents. Right. Okay. That's, that's a good, good explanation. Uh, Cause a lot of people, I don't think understand how important that is. They, you know, they, they think it's just the government wants to know how many people, but they don't know why. So um, knowing that's helpful. Now the, the um, census is underway. I, you know, I got mine yeah. in the mail. We got it done like, immediately. And, uh, yeah. but, but there are some people that either haven't received it or have somehow missed it. What can those people do? Yes, absolutely. So uh, if you haven't already, most folks have received three to four either postcards or mailers. The next mailer that's scheduled to go out at uh, the end of this month, end of April, will actually include the actual physical questionnaire. Now, this is the first time that you've been able to go online to complete the census. So we're encouraging people to do that, but if you don't have access to the internet and you haven't filled it out, you will be mailed a paper form to complete it. Either way is fine, but we just want to make sure that everyone does that. And especially, um, you know, amidst the COVID environment, is what happens if a person does not complete their census, uh, potentially someone called an enumerator will come out to your physical address and ask you to complete your census. So we don't want to, you know, it's the US Census Bureau who sends those, those folks out. But obviously uh, it would be much better if people don't have to come out to your home. So uh, by filling out the census either via online or the paper form. Uh, it helps protect our community to a greater extent. Uh, and then there are some folks that are, uh, they're uncomfortable knocking, having people knock on their doors. And so again, if you fill out your census, that's just a great way uh, that will allow enumer enumerators not to have to come out to your house. So, so if it's you really get, yeah. get, it get it taken care of, nobody will bother you again about it. <laughs> Exactly. And it's really, you know, I mean, you know, you filled it out. It took me like five minutes. How mm -hmm. long did it take you to fill out? Five minutes. Yeah. yeah it was very exactly. simple. It's a very yes, short, yeah. very short, very few questions. Nothing that you have to look up the answers to. Uh, so it, it, there's really no reason not to do it. I know yes. that there are people that have fears about it. That The question about um, your um, legal status is not on there. So that's right. To worry about that. 
um, there, what about people who uh, don't have a home and they don't yeah. have perhaps an address? Yes, uh, we are working with our Joint Office of Homeless Services to count people uh, in our houseless population. Uh, so we have a designated time period uh, that we will be uh, doing kind of uh, what are called kind of like group enumerations uh, that are also done like in our, our jail system or any type of kind of a congregate living situation. So we are working really closely uh, with our outreach workers as well, because as you know, many houseless individuals live outdoors. Uh, and so a lot of those uh, nonprofit organizations have relationships with those folks. So we're, uh, we're partnering with them to reach those folks and ensure that, that they're all counted as well. Good, good. I was, I was a little surprised when you said something about the enumerators because I was thinking that maybe that job would just go away with the COVID-19 crisis. Well, it, uh, I think it remains to be seen. As you know, uh, things change from moment to moment and day to day, uh, and that, that potentially uh, could be something uh, that might happen, which makes it all the more important for people to fill that form out either online or physically uh, with a paper form. Okay, okay. How, um, how is Multnomah County doing as compared to, say, the rest of the state or the rest of the country yeah. and getting their information in? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, across the country, as of uh, today, April 22nd, uh, we've had a response rate of about 51% across the entire United States. Compared uh, to Oregon, we're at about 54%. So we're about three points ahead of, of the national average. Uh, but here in Multnomah County, we're at 58%. So we're actually doing pretty good. Got to give a shout out to Troutdale, who's at 61%. So way to go, Troutdale. Keep, keep going. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, we, um, we do have some time. Originally, the self-response rate was going to end at the end of July. But with the advent of this pandemic, uh, it's actually been extended until October 31st. So we actually have an additional three months to get the census completed. So uh, we still have about six months in total between now and October 31st. But uh, as you know, uh, this pandemic has uh, impacted so many folks and uh, to some degree maybe increased fears as, as what you had mentioned. And so we're really trying to be uh, sensitive and be culturally specific. We have a, a very diverse outreach team that, that's working with uh, many of our community members and we wanna make sure that we're addressing what their concerns are. And there are laws in place that uh, make sure that census workers are not allowed to share this information. Uh, a census worker would never ask for your social security number, would never ask uh, for your citizenship status. So really those things, uh, and if they were to share with that information with anyone, it's actually illegal and that they, there are fines uh, and other uh, requirements that, that could come into play. So uh, I, it, it is challenging to reassure people, but the money that we get from the result of the census often goes back uh, to the most vulnerable communities in our, uh, you know, in our area that really, really need that help. So I understand that fear, uh, but uh, departments are not able uh, at the federal government, there are laws in place where they are not able to share uh, the results of the census with other departments. Good, good. Well, that's reassuring. Um, is there anything else that you're doing to encourage people to participate in the census? Yeah, so as you know, we've all had to shift uh, with the pandemic and, you know, we were scheduled to do, we were going to have these mobile vans fleet that were going to go out to all these great events and we were really excited and then, uh, we're not able to do that, but that's okay. Uh, we're figuring out how we can interact more virtually and online. Uh, so what we are, we're doing right now is a photo census uh, contest. So if you have an, a furry friend, uh, take a picture of uh, your census form, or you can go online to uh, the website, uh, which is the 2020census.gov is the website, and take a picture of you and your pet. Uh, and if you go on to uh, my Twitter account 
or our Facebook account at uh, Lori Stegman, Multnomah County Commissioner District 4, uh, you'll see some of the, the past winners. So we've had chickens, we've had cats, we've had dogs. Uh, so, uh, you know, we just, right now, I think people really need um, anything that can make them smile and uplift them uh, while promoting something really important to our community. Uh, that's a great way that people can help us. Yeah, that, and that's a very fun way. And people like to show off their pets. So that's, that's fun. Um, and, and you're picking a winner every week, is that uh, right? Yeah, or, actually, yeah. We, we've been doing three winners um, every other week, bi-weekly. And so as you know, uh, many small businesses and especially restaurants are suffering. So we're purchasing local gift certificates from restaurants and small businesses. So if folks want to get uh, to go orders now, they can or they can get a gift certificate and then they can go visit their favorite restaurant restaurant uh, once this is all over. So absolutely, uh, we wanted to find a way uh, that we could promote our small businesses in the community and get the word out about how important the census is. Good. Fun, fun way to do it. I like that. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we should know about what's going on with the census uh, this year in 2020? Um, I mean, just other than, uh, you know, the work that Multnomah County does is, is so foundational and so important to this community. Many folks don't know that, that we have 32 health clinics, that we maintain 26 bridges. Uh, we have 90 Sun School sites within six school districts. Uh, the county, we, we serve seniors, folks with disabilities, uh, domestic violence survivors, you know, low income folks, and houseless individuals. So these, uh, these services and these folks uh, are, are why the census is so important. And we want to make sure that people have access to housing, that they have food security, uh, that they have safety in their homes. And during this pandemic, we know that people are, are more vulnerable. And so it really highlights the need for us to make sure that we have the funding to be able to do the county's mission. So just want everybody to know, talk to your friends, talk to your relatives talk to your community and uh, encourage them to fill out the census because that represents about four thousand dollars per person so across the united states it's about 900 billion dollars with a b each year that's, that gets distributed across the united states and the state of oregon's share of that is about 14 billion dollars each year. So for every person that fills the, out their census, that's about $4,000 per person each year that comes in to the county, uh, well, to the state. But then, of course, you know, some of that money filters down into our county services. So it affects everything and everybody, uh, and we just need everybody to, to fill it out, go online, and encourage others to do so also. Good. That's, that's wonderful. I, and that stat is a very um, a telling one. $4,000 a person. I mean, it, it affects everybody. So thank you so much, Lori, for sharing all that information today. Keep up the good work. We love what you're doing at the county and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Monica. And all of you watching, please uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.